Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall, Confucius. Good morning, welcome student community and respectable authorities. Professor Jinglong Wang, director of Confucius, of Confucius Institute of the University of El Salvador, Mr. Nestor Adonai Hernandez Baires, director, um, excuse me, I, I hear myself twice. I'm listening to myself twice. Don't worry, don't worry. We can listen to you just one time. Uh, okay. Um, Mr. Nestor Alnay Hernandez Baires, Director of the Secretariat of the National and International Relations of the University of El Salvador and Co Director of Confucius Institute of the University of El Salvador. Ms. Santos del Carmen Flores, Professor of the School of International Relations, on behalf of Mr. Nelson Ernesto Rivera, Director of the School of International Relations, Ms. Berta Portillo Hernandez, and Mr. Julio Hernandez Ramirez, Professors of the School of International Relations, Josue David Perez Martinez, the Administrative Technician and National Liaison of Confucius Institute of, International of the University of El Salvador, and Mr. Elmer Arturo Bonilla Ruiz, conference liaison and professor of the School of International Relations. Today, we have the honor to introduce the conference title Culture of Harmony and China Today, in which interesting contents will be developed, such as the origin of Chinese harmony, the Chinese practices of harmony, and the reflections on Chinese harmony. Now, Mr. Elmer Bonilla will give the opening remarks of the event. Okay, welcome again to everyone here to the series of lecture and conference today, Culture of Harmony and China today. Uh, let me thank to the organizer staff and technical support, uh, Diana Hernandez and Andre Chico, the, the hosting, uh, the professor Jinglong Wang, the director of, of the Confucius Institute for, of the University of El Salvador, uh, Mr. Nestor Hernandez, Director of the Secretariat of the National and International Relations of the University of El Salvador and Co-Director of the Confucius Institute of the University of El Salvador. Uh, to the Professor Carmen Flores on behalf of the Master Nelson Rivera, Director of the School of International Relations. Uh, also, let me thanks to the Berta Portillo Hernandez and Julio Armando Ramirez, Professor of the School of International Relations to Josue David Perez, Administrative Technicians and National Liaison of the Confucius Institute of the University of El Salvador, and all the people, the technicians that make this uh, conference possible. Uh, let's say that uh, we are going to congratulate also, take this uh, opportunity to co congratulate uh, to China for the 72 anniversary as a nation. And uh, today in the conference, the, in the lecture that the Professor Juan is going to be uh, giving, just let you know that while he's giving the speech, you can ask your question through the chat, bot, chat box here in the Google Meet. And it's a pleasure for us to have you here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bonilla, for your words. Now, Mr. Nestor Hernandez will give some elusive words to the conference. Thank you uh, very much, uh, everybody, for being here. I just want to share with you how important it is for us to share with you this uh, conference that will be offered today by Professor Wang Qinglong. He is the director of the Confucius Institute of our university. He has been here for over one year now, almost two years. And uh, well, it's, uh, it's a big opportunity for us. The University of El Salvador has been part of this project since uh, the beginning of the relations that were opened between the Popular Republic of China and uh, El Salvador since August 2018. Since then, we have been sharing a very close agenda in topics and dialogue with uh, our sister university in China, which is the Southwest University of Science and Technology which is the, the university where Professor Wang Qinglong belongs. It's located in the province of uh, Sichuan, in the city of Mianyang, over there in China. 
uh, it's been a, a big uh, journey for us to be here now. Uh, the pandemic has been a big challenge for us, but I just want to share with you that this is a, a very important project for the university, for our rector, Roger Arias, who has uh, been, who has not been able to be here today, but he wants to share with you his thoughts and, uh, and also for the vice rectors. We as uh, University of El Salvador consider that uh, any opportunity like this should be uh, taken advantage of and uh, for the best uh, or for the for the in order to improve the quality of our of our education for our students and uh, to open more opportunities for our professors and for our faculty members and staff members and everybody here so thank you very much for being here we hope that this is a big a big opportunity for you to know more about china to know about their traditions and culture thoughts and uh, of course in order for you also to know our director who is uh, i think the, the the most important person from the Chinese community here in, in El Salvador in terms of academy, of academy and scientific topics. So please uh, take advantage of Professor Wan today because he is a very smart person. He has a, a big knowledge, of course, of his own culture. And uh, please uh, follow all of our activities and not only this conference, but any other activities that we have as Confucius Institute. Please follow us on our social networks. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook as well, and uh, also in Twitter. So please follow us in order to, to find out what's new and uh, any other chance that we, you may have in order to join even more activities with us. So thank you for being here. And uh, thank you, Professor Wan, and also to the faculty members that are, be, are here today. Uh, Professor Santo del Carmen, of course, my dear friend, as well as Elmer Bonilla. Thank you for making this possible. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez, for your words. Now, Ms. Santos del Carmen Flores will delight us with some words. Thank you so much. Good morning to, to all who are present here. My name is Carmen Flores, and I'll be giving the welcome speech for today's conference, Culture of Harmony in China Today. I'm on, I'm on behalf of the Master Neston, Nelson Ernesto Rivera, Director of the International Relations School, who is currently attending an institutional matter. All things under the sun will flourish when harmony prevails. This one's once said, but soon see, a famous philosopher who lived in the world states period, China human rights. The quote highlights the importance of harmony in the life of Chinese. In the ancient China, people were living close to each other in groups. They were relying on one another, and in order to live together peacefully, there was a strong need to communicate well. Harmony, can, which can be defined as a situation of peace, happiness, and agreement, therefore played a major role in the earlier days. The situations of total harmony can only be achieved through finding the right balance in communications. Since the establishment of culture and harmony in China, many things have changed. Nowadays, people are, are facing more possibilities, huge open markets and growing economy and traditional changes. Trouble can be found everywhere, and it is often hard to avoid them. Harmony helps people to deal with changes as it's its concept that ties people and nations <clears throat> together. Harmony is an important part of the Chinese culture. When living in harmony, people can share various kinds of interests and accept different opinions without showing disagreements. Harmony is used and conducted in many different areas of life. In China, the most important one is harmony between people, especially family. Therefore, it is essential to treat each other with respect, even more to older people. 
as harmony is based on loyalty and justice, one should never do anything to others and would not want to experience oneself either. Furthermore, Chinese show harmony towards nature by using it thoughtfully and trying to maintain an appropriate balance with it. Also, harmony be applied in politics, economics, and diplomacy. It can be applied in the people's everyday life. For us and for the rest of the world, it is very important to know about Chinese culture because we have so many things and aspects to learn about. Their interesting point of view and ways to see life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Flores, for your words. After Professor Wang's presentation, we will have a question and answer round. We ask the students here in Google Meet, as in Facebook Live, to pay attention and participate by leaving your questions in the chat. Prior to getting started with the conference, we would like to introduce the lecturer in charge of the development of this session. Professor Jianlong Wang, he is a professor of foreign linguistics, Southwest University of Science and Technology, China, Master of Education, Supervisor of Foreign Linguistics and Applied Linguistics for Master's Degree. The current Chinese director of the Confucius Institute at the University of El Salvador and former head of the English Department of the School of Foreign Languages, Southwest University of Science and Technology, China. His main fields of studies include Chinese culture, Latin American culture, cognitive linguistics, and second language acquisition. Also, in 2015 and 2016, he was engaged in international Chinese education in the United States. His knowledge will be a great source of enrichment for all of us. Welcome, Professor Wang. Okay, thank you so much for the nice introductions and warm-hearted welcome uh, speeches. Yes, from uh, uh, Amber, from Nestor, and uh, especially Santos. Uh, because Santos uh, seems to have known, yes or not, about the Chinese culture, about especially uh, Chinese uh, harmony. So actually, I'm very happy, yes, here to uh, to share with you uh, some topics related to Chinese culture. Uh, so actually, you know, so China has uh, so long a uh, history, yes, more than five thousand years. So actually. Uh, there's a lot of uh, topics to share with you. Uh, yes, quite a lot of. Uh, so this is the second time, yes, for me to share to share in English. Yes, uh, yes, with you, but I cannot uh, do it. Yes, in Spanish. I hope yes in the future. Yes, I may do that. Yes, I'm uh, learning Spanish. So each day, yes, here, but because of the pandemic. You know, it it uh, yes, in the interrupts it interrupts yes, my learning of Spanish. Um, so uh, and uh, today is uh, October first over there in China. So uh, co co coincidentally, so it is uh, China's National Day. So uh, this lecture today is in the name of. Uh, the China National Day, yes. And uh, yes, I'm also yes very happy uh, to be engaged in such lectures, activities uh, between the uh, cultural exchanges of uh, El Salvador, yes, and China. And also in this month, uh, 11th of October, yes, we're going to have the third so cultural exchange, so online between both universities of uh, West and uh, Swast, yes, between El Salvador, yes, and China. Okay, now uh, uh, let me come to, yes, the main topic uh, for the day here. I'd like to share, yes, with you the PPT, yes, doc.
So does it work? So can you see it? Yes, Professor. Okay, thank you. So today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, three aspects. The first is the origin of Chinese harmony. And the second is about the, uh, some Chinese practices yes, of harmony and reflections. And finally, about reflections. So my reflections on Chinese harmony. So here on the stone, so you can see the Chinese character. So this character uh, means harmony. And uh, uh, so in many places, you can see this character. Yes, on stone, on the wall, or yes, on the slogan, or many other places. Uh, yes, on so many public places, you can see the Chinese character. It's pronounced as uh, he, he, meaning, yes, harmony. Uh, so actually, this character uh, represents one of the most important aspects of Chinese culture. So in my view, so this term and uh, this concept of harmony is originated, yes, from Yi Jin, Yi Qin. So Yi Qin, uh, Yi Qin you know, uh, was regarded as the origin of uh, all Chinese culture. So that means all of Chinese philosophy, all of Chinese uh, thoughts, and the most important concepts, yes, were from this great book, Yi Jin. So it is uh, uh, the source of Chinese philosophy. Uh, so from this, from this map, so this map is named the Taiji map. So Taiji map. So in this map, you can see so two so opposite elements. So we name it uh, as uh, yin and yang. Uh, yin and yang. So uh, in our views, uh, there are almost uh, there are always uh, different different elements, different. Uh, uh, forces, yes, in a, uh, in a matter, uh, in an event, uh, almost for everything. So uh, it indicates, yes, in an unity, there must be different elements and different forces. So which drives the movement, yes, of, of it. But uh, they are a complete whole, but they are working and the movement in the unity, in the unity, in the complete whole. So they are unified and interacted with each other. So these two elements, these two driving forces are interrupted, but within one whole body. So uh, this can be regarded as a source of Chinese view yes, of harmony. So actually, uh, Yi Jin is quite complicated to understand, even for uh, the Chinese. But here, I'd, I'd like to just to share with you just a little bit about it. And the harmony uh, is deeply rooted in the unity of uh, heaven and the human. Heaven and the human. And in the Chinese philosophy, so heaven is, is usually used to represent a Tao or way or nature. So when we talk about Tao, so we mean the natural laws. Uh, we think it is a supreme moral force in nature, in the universe. And when we mention the human, uh, it refers to uh, people's lives, uh, people's daily lives. So actually, yes, the Chinese from the, uh, the ancient times focused, focused on the daily lives and uh, focused on our observation towards the nature, uh, towards heaven, uh, towards earth, 
Yes, and the, and especially on the relationship, yes, between the heaven and the man, nature and the man. And we think Tao exists in daily lives. Tao is not far away from, from us. It exists in people's daily life. And Tao is also, uh, yeah. But uh, yes, for human life, for human life, Tao is, is the or the virtue. Uh, when we use Tao, yes, in the society, in the human lives, we give it another name that is the De, De meaning the virtue. Because we think that we should learn from nature, learn from heaven. So that is their virtue or good morality. And then uh, in Chinese culture, we have a term, Dao De. Yes, we put Dao and De together. Yes, to coin a new word, so Dao De. So from the making of this word, we can see it is the unity of heaven and man. It is a combination or composition of both heaven and man. And it has become a belief of Chinese. So we believe in Dao De. So we can say, yes, most Chinese people, the great majority of Chinese believe in Dao De. Because, you know, De is from Dao. And when we put Dao and De together, so we have the unity of human and heaven. So it is a, it is a kind of harmony. Uh, so we think the first harmony for the Chinese culture is in the unity of heaven and human. Also in the term of Dao De, So here, I'd like to share with you some aspects of Chinese harmony. So uh, as I uh, mentioned just now, it is a unified view of the universe, unified. So we think in our view, we think the universe is a complete whole. It is a unity. And because it includes almost everything in it, uh, it includes the heaven, the earth, the human being, and the animals, plants, yes, everything. But this unity is made up of uh, differences. Differences, uh, different things, uh, different objects, different subjects. So actually, so in our view, differences come first, but not the sameness. So if there, everything is, is just the same on earth and the universe cannot su survive the universe cannot go on, cannot live on. So we think differences are first. So unity is the unity of differences. So we respect differences. So here, according to, yes, a classic of Chinese, so it says, Things survive only when they are integrated and harmonized with other elements. So, or same elements stop them developing. If there's just a sameness in the world, so it stops them developing. That means the universe cannot live on. So, uh, so this emphasizes survival out of integrity of differences. Uh, integrity is a combination, it is a, it is a yes, combination of differences of the universe. So according to the Chinese observation of the universe, especially about the, the harmonious uh, uh, combination, yes, of everything in the universe. 
So we think, yes, we need cooperation, coordination, and interaction. You know, Chinese philosophy and the Chinese wisdom is out of the observation of nature, of the universe, of the outside world. So we always depend on our observations, our experience about the outside world. So we think the truth is from our experiences and our observations. So according to the uh, to the concept of harmony, yes, we think we need cooperation and coordination and interaction. And there should be no war, no hegemony. Uh, there should be, yes, peace on earth. And finally, no extreme. Yes, we need a balance. No losing, no winning, the balanced state. Uh, for example, yes, in the in the Chinese chess game, in the Chinese chess game, there's a perfect state or ideal state is no losing and no winning. So that is the perfect state. Uh, that can help you, yes, to reach a perfect state of harmony. So these are the aspects of Chinese harmony. Uh, so what is harmony? So harmony, actually, it is a state in which each side is satisfied. That means any side, anybody, so any party, yes, can be satisfied. So that is a state of uh, harmony. And it's uh, Chinese supreme pursuit of values. So utmost pursuit of values, and also the basic principles. Also, yes, a basic principle of interpersonal and the social interaction. For example, when Chinese make uh, fish soup, yes, we need to add water, fish, sometimes meat, salt, flavors, ginger, onion, etc. And we cook for suitable time under appropriate temperature. So we use different temperature. And we uh, spend a yeah, suitable time, uh, not so long time, not so short. And we will adjust the temperature, yes, of the stuff. Yes, to make everything in the soup to become a harmonious state, a perfect state. And the result is we can drink uh, the fish soup with a perfect taste. So this is just, uh, yes, one example of the state of harmony, yes, in the Chinese culture. And yes, for human beings, uh, human beings can find, yes, a, a harmonious state in nature. Uh, for example, yes, when you are practicing uh, yu jia or some kind of exercise, yes, in nature, so you may find a perfect harmonious state. And next, I'd like to, uh, to discuss a Confucianist system of harmony. As I mentioned last time in the first lecture, so Confucianism includes the following five aspects. So then, so that is human, uh, humaneness, yi, what is right, rightness, fairness, reason, li, the rights, a ritual, a propriety, and the zi, the wisdom, xin, trust, so trustworthy. So here, actually, all these five aspects, so make up the, the pyramid. So at the top, use a Zen. So Zen is a general term. So it, uh, 
includes and it covers all the other aspects. It is at the top of the pyramid. And lower, below it, that is Yi, and still lower, so Li, Zhu, and at the bottom, Xin. So then is the you know, supreme pursuit of Confucian, of Confucianism. And it is also a harmonious system. So all these aspects make up, yes, a, ho a harmony, a harmony of Confucianism. Uh, because I will discuss, for example, Li uh, later today. Yes, Li. And I will also mention about Zen and the Yi. Uh, because, you know, Confucianism is a ruling philosophy of Chinese. So, uh, Confucianist view of harmony here, I like to name some examples. The first, uh, for example, harmony is what is most prized in the practice of the rites. So, that is Li. So, according to uh, Confucius, I come to Confucio. So he thinks, so uh, harmony is the uh, most prized in the li, li. And the second, so gentlemen seek harmony, but not uniformity. According to the uh, analytics, seek harmony, we seek harmony, but not uniformity, not the sameness. Uh, we do not pursue yes sameness, but uh, we should seek a state of harmony. Uh, for example, in a group of people in the society, and also in the world, in the whole world. And uh, certainly, so harmony is a free way under heaven. So uh, Confucius thought so harmony is free way, just like the express way the free way under heaven. That means all people can travel to on the free way. And all people can get the best from the free way. All people can realize their goals so on the way of harmony. All things exist together, but never harm each other. Always function together, but never go against each other. So this is also from the Confucianist classics. Confucianist classics, the doctrine of golden mean. So according to the Confucianism, all things exist together, but they never harm each other. For example, in the garden. Now in a garden, you can find different flowers different uh, plants and even weeds, but they do not harm each other. So all of the flowers, yes, grow well, yes, in the garden. All the plants, yes, grow well in the, in the garden. They do not harm each other. And always, if you observe the ways, expressways, highways, the roads, and the streets, uh, so you may you may find yes uh, they are running to different directions but they never go against each other. For example, the right side of the road does not go against with the left side of the road. They are not contradictory. So these are the sayings yes from the uh, Confucian Confucianist works. Here, I'd like to give you some examples. For example, the first example is about subcultures. You know, in ancient times of China, there are quite uh, several, there are quite a few the subcultures, actually, yes, because China is uh, so large. So in different parts of China, uh, there were different subcultures, for example, uh, Yangshao culture, 
Yang Sa culture. Yes, it is mostly along the Huanghe River. The Huanghe River is the Yang Sa culture. So this part, around this part, yes, of China, the Yang Sa culture. And the Basu culture, Basu culture is about here. Basu culture is a culture that's where I, I am from. Uh, because it is mostly yes in Sichuan Basin, and the Liangzhu culture, Liangzhu culture is is along the eastern part of China, at the lower reaches of the Yangtze River. Liangzhu culture, and also Hongshan culture, yes, is the northern part of China, Hongshan culture, and some other cultures. Yes, for example, in the uh, southern part of China and in the northern part of China, there are still yes some other kinds of subcultures. But all such subcultures live peacefully and harmoniously. And there are some other examples, for example, Buddhism. As you know, Buddhism was borrowed from India in history. And then it was absorbed to be part of Chinese culture. And uh, living together with Confucianism and Taoism. So it becomes, uh, it becomes, yes, one major part of Chinese culture. So that is uh, Buddhism. Uh, Chinese people accepted it, accepted it into the Chinese culture. And it has become part of uh, the unity of Chinese culture. So that means all Chinese people, yes, can live peacefully with Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. So maybe it is strange sometimes to see uh, different temples, for example, so Buddhist temple and Conf Confucianist temple and Taoist temple together, but uh, yes, in one temple, under one temple, roof, you may find Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. So it may be uh, strange, yes, to, to some of you, right? Another example, yes, in China, we have a policy of one country with two systems. For example, so when Hong Kong and Macau, yes, returned to China, we began to apply the policy one country, two systems. And it uh, successfully, this policy successfully resolved the historical issue on Hong Kong and Macau. Uh, you know, they were the colonies in history. And then China's today's development. Uh, it is a harmonious one, a development of economy, politics, so culture, human rights, ecology, ecology, etc. It is a harmonious way of development, not only on economy, but also on all other sides of the Chinese society. And it is also a unified development of cities and countryside. Uh, for example, east and west of China. So different parts of China, and the cities, the countryside. So if you go to China, so you can see and nowadays the countryside is almost as good as the cities. So when you visit, so when you go to, when you go everywhere in China, you will find there's little differences between cities and the countryside. Uh, in the countryside, you can also use the, for example, the, the internet, the fast internet, uh, cell phones, and you can also pay uh, on WeChat. Yes, everywhere, uh, even in the countryside. So China is having a harmonious development, is, has uh, it has a unified development. So that is a harmonious development, harmonious way of development, so I suppose. 
Okay, uh, secondly, I'd like to offer to you some uh, about Chinese practices of uh, harmony. So on these aspects, first is from harmony from family to society, second, harmony with the environment, harmony in politics and law, harmony in education, harmony in that traditional Chinese medicine, and harmony in Chinese art. Finally, a harmony view of international relations. So for the Chinese society, it starts from each family because we think in our view, a family is just like a society. A family is a small society and a society is made up of so many families. As that is also the case of the world. So our culture, so firstly, considers family. So we have the family country relationship is, is like, yes, a country is made of, uh, is made of so many families. So if, if we have harmonious families and then we can have a harmonious country. So that is uh, our understanding about the relationship. So in many cases, so in China, we observe a person, not just from himself or herself, and we may observe the family where he or, he or she is from. For example, so sometimes when we uh, are going to choose or select a leader, especially as high ranking leaders, uh, top, authority leaders, we, we will investigate, we will make some investigations into his or her family, about his parents, about uh, sisters, about uh, his relation with uh, his or her family members. And uh, we think there are three important relations in a family. So that is the parents, and uh, children. And the second is uh, uh, husband and wife. The third relation is between sisters and brothers. So if you can deal with these uh, three relations as well in the family, and then you can be a qualified citizen. And you can live harmoniously with the society, with other people. And so in Chinese, we have a saying, harmony rules of family. So this is a meaning of these five characters. Jia, He, Wan, Shi, Xin. Yes, He, He appeared again, harmony. Jia, so meaning family. So when a family is harmonious, and then, it means everything will prosper. Everything will be good. So how many rules of family? So in a family, so how many is the most important thing? The harmony is yes, between all family members. And in the society, there are two basic relations to deal with. So the first is between old and young, and the second is between friends. So old and young, so in China, um, in most cases, we, yes, respect the old, the senior citizens. Uh, for example, when you uh, so get on the bus, Yes, we will leave our seats to the old, to the senior people. And we think that there should be honesty and trust among friends. So by this way, we can have a harmonious society, harmonious community. And, and also, harmony is a core value of Chinese socialism. 
the core value of Chinese citizens. So uh, one of the goal or purpose for Chinese society is to create a harmonious community, a harmonious society. So that is to make everybody live harmoniously, peacefully, and, uh, and very well, uh, yes, with other people and with other things. Yes, another example is, uh, you know, in China, there are 56 nationalities or ethnic uh, groups, but all these nationalities, ethnic groups uh, live harmoniously, peacefully under one Chinese nation. And they have uh, quite a lot of communications, yes, between different nationalities. They don't have wars. They don't have, they don't have clashes. They live a ha happy life together. Yes, they exchange ideas with each other and they share with each other. And there are some st uh, statistics. For example, in recent years, uh, some investigations, yes, was made about the trust to the central government of China by the Chinese citizens. It has always been averaging about above 90% based on various investigations inside China and outside China. Yes, another investigation made by the USA, by an American uh, institution. So, and yes, a German public relations worldwide uh, last year. So it revealed, so 95% of the Chinese citizens trust the central government of China. Okay, uh, secondly, I'd like to discuss uh, harmony with nature, with the environment. You know, uh, when Chinese so build a house, build a house, uh, or build a road, or build a, a lake, build a pool, or build everything, or build a temple especially, or when uh, Chinese people find uh, a place of, uh, for, for the tomb or cemetery, they attach great importance to feng shui. Feng shui. Uh, feng shui actually is uh, a kind of harmony of nature and the human. It is a symbol. It is a representation of harmony of nature and the human. Because Chinese people, yes, will consider such aspects for example, the direction of river, the direction of wind, the direction of the mountain, road, etc., or aspects, and to find the best place to build the house, to build the road or temple, or to find a place to live. And for example, yes, in uh, in this house. Uh, where should where should the parents live? So which room should the parents live? There's also some considerations. And whether or not it is good to to build, for example, a pool yeah, or to build a fountain. So in the in the yard, uh, yes, we should also consider oh, where should be the best place. And this picture so indicates the, the ancient way of building. Yes, in Beijing city, in the northern part of China, in the northern part of China, they build houses like this, just to uh, circle with the walls, with the, with the rooms, yes, to make it into a square, uh, into squares, not just for the, not just uh, for the concern of security and safety, but also it considers uh, it considers yes feng shui, 
uh, for example, so where uh, should we have the door, have the entrance? There are some considerations. So actually, so these habits also represent uh, so Chinese people's concern about harmony uh, between the so nature and the man. Uh, in recent years, Chinese government, Chinese government has announced to the whole world about its green commitments. Uh, so China, China has promised, yes, to, to reach the peak carbon dioxide emissions by 2030 and to reach carbon neutrality by 2060. So in order to create a yes, better environment yes, for Chinese people and for the world. Next, so how many in politics and law? Uh, according to the Confucianist political philosophy, um, so Keyism, uh, the pursue, the pursue, the Keyism, or politics with uh, humaneness, or state governance by virtues. So all these, uh, all these values and the philosophy attach importance to the good moralities, the good virtues of the leaders especially of the top leaders, of the presidents, for example, of the kings. So it should be humane first, should have virtues. And then uh, you can be, yes, a good, a good king, a good president, good governor. So according to the Confucianist uh, masterpiece, Great learning, so it says the country does not take economical benefit as profit, but justice as profit. So that means on the country level, on the level of the country as a whole, it should not consider economy as a most important thing, as a profit. So the country should consider fairness, equality, rightness, yes, as profit, as the most important thing. So this is a traditional political philosophy in China. And in today's life, for example, in the North Suit, uh, in the convictions, uh, so we just follow so human feelings, rationality, and legality, and the legality is in order to comply in the lawsuit or trials. So we think the human feelings, social feelings especially, are very important. And then rationality, and then reason, truth, facts. And, and then it should be, yes, uh, legal, uh, should be legal. So you may find the human feelings, yes, come first. Uh, this becomes the first important things to consider in the lawsuits or trials. So in the practices of the law court conviction, so ethical morality and social feelings may decide the final decision. So this may be somewhat different, yes, from the Western countries, right? Next, in education, according to the Annex, so Confucius said, so provide education for all people without discrimination. And with equal education, there will be no distinction between classes. So uh, this indicates a Confucianist dream of equality uh, through education. So that is the Chinese view of human rights. So if citizens can receive equal education, 
and then there will be no distinction between classes. Now, for example, now China has realized the nine-year compulsory education for free for all people, for all Chinese. And, uh, and very soon, uh, China will realize a 12 year compulsory education. That means up to high school, up to high school compulsory education for free for all Chinese. Now, uh, how many in medicine, traditional medicine? So here I mean traditional Chinese medicine. So uh, traditionally, a doctor should first be humane. Should be a person, yes, with uh, good moralities. Uh, should be a person of uh, virtue. Uh, Chinese traditional so medicine makes diagnosis based on observation of patients' appearance, uh, sound, uh, inquiry, and uh, yes, feeling the pulse. Yeah, this is feeling the pulse. Uh, these are the steps, the four steps for diagnosis. And then the doctor decides on treatment, what to treat. So this is a yes, medicine, the medication, the Chinese medications, herbs, yes, for the treatment. So you can also find a harmonious way, a harmonious way to consider not just the sickness itself, but also to concern people, for example, to ask questions about uh, the patients, uh, work and the daily life and some other details yet to show the care yes for the person for the people and then uh, on the aspect of treatment yes a doctor will con will consider will consider all aspects of the uh, patient and including the mental aspects, the mental uh, side, yes, of the patient. And we consider, yes, different uh, system of the human body. Okay, and how many in Chinese art? Uh, for example, in Chinese calligraphy? In Chinese calligraphy, we can also find, yes, a harmony, a kind of harmony. Uh, yes, between the dots, between the dots and the strokes, between the dots and the, to make it uh, uh, the rich, yes, so the perfect match, a perfect state of uh, harmony and beauty. So we can consider from the structure of the character, structure of the, and also, yes, structure of the whole passage. For example, this line and this line and where to begin and where to finish and how to, uh, how to use the ink, how much ink, yes, to use. For example, for this character, yes, more ink is used for this character and for this character, less ink. Yeah. So there are, yes, a lot of considerations, yes, between lines and between words. And in order to reach a perfect match, a perfect state of harmony. Yes, for the whole passage. And it also uh, included in the Chinese uh, painting. For example, yes, in this Chinese painting, traditional painting, you can, you can find a harmonious a harmony of uh, nature and the people. For example, yes, people here, people are very, yes, seems very, very little, yes, in the, in the painting, because people are just a small part of the nature, of the nature. So nature, yes, is much bigger, it's much bigger. So the Chinese painting, yes, traditional Chinese painting, yes, indicates, uh, indicates a harmonious state of, 
harmonious state, yes, between heaven, uh, between nature and human beings. And also in international relations, so China, yes, agrees to, to obey the common human values uh, throughout the world, for example, peace, development, fairness, justice, democracy, and freedom. So we accept all these common human values. And in dealing with the uh, disputes, conflict, and issues, we think we should uh, seek common ground while reserving differences and uh, diversity. Because we agree that um, we have differences and uh, uh, we are diversified, but uh, we should find uh, something common for the first place. And we also need the cooperation and the win-win strategy, not just the one side to win, uh, to win. We should try to help each side to win. And we uh, prefer, yes, a peaceful development against a zero-sum game. Not just uh, yin and yang, uh, yes, to, to realize a zero-sum game. So we think any uh, activities, any uh, cooperation, so it can be win-win, and it can reach a peaceful uh, a state. And a multilateral multilateralism against unilateralism, uh, the real yes multilateralism. So it should be uh, like this. It can help yes all sides to win, not just one side, not just one country to win. And how many international relations? And uh, yes, one example. Uh, in the Ming Dynasty, yes, in China, yes, the 45 to yes, the 1433, you know, um, Zheng He uh, traveled uh, for seven times, for seven times, made a sea uh, voyages, uh, traveled to Western uh, Pacific, Indian Ocean, and Africa, and even Africa. But, but China yes, had never conquered or built any colonies in uh, Africa or yes, in Asia, India, or some other uh, places. So China preserved the world peace against so hegemony, hegemony. Uh, we've never built any colonies in the world, even if yes, we traveled to uh, other continents. Yes, in history. Uh, very early, right? very early. And we uh, stick to, uh, we stick to five principles of international relations. Maybe, yes, you are familiar with these, right? Uh, so mutual respect for uh, territorial integrity and the sovereignty, non-aggression, non-interference each other's, uh, yes, internal affairs, equality and mutual benefit, so peaceful coexistence. Oh, uh, time is time is almost up. So can I continue? Okay. Uh, so yes, uh, let me talk a little bit and uh, faster. Yes, how many in the international relations? Chinese view of war. It appeared, yes, in the Chinese view of war, the military, for example, in the uh, masterpiece uh, work, Sunzi, uh, Art of War. So it is a book about the military, very famous, uh, world famous military, uh, uh, book of military. The military is of vital importance to the state. It is a matter of life and death, a way of survival or death. So hence, it is a subject of inquiry. So which can on no account be neglected. So we attach, so we are very cautious. Uh, yes, as Chinese people, yes, in history, we're very cautious of launching a war. And, and also it said, so hence to fight and to conquer in all your battles is not a supreme excellence. The supreme art of war is to conquer the enemy without war. 
So it is a sense of non-war, non-war, non-aggression, aggression, non-invasion. So victory is not is not a supreme excellence, but so how to avoid the war? That is the most important. So other war is uh, is based on Zen or uh, humaneness. So another example, yes, is the Chinese character Wu. So meaning so martial. So this character means to give up weapons. So this is quite interesting, right? So this character it means to give up weapons. So it means martial, but it means to give up weapons. And uh, in the third part, I'd like to share with you, yes, some of my reflections on Chinese uh, harmony. So the first is uh, be inclusive. Yes, I think, uh, so all people, all human beings, yes, if you respect the differences first and make each satisfied and seek a common ground where reserving differences, uh, seeking differences where, with common ground. And according to the annex, do not do to others what you do not want others to do to you. Okay, so how many meaning cooperation? Uh, for example, the Belt and Road Initiative, yes, from China, yes, to the West Asia, and even to Europe, to Africa, and even to Latin America. Yeah, initiative for China Latin America community of shared future. This is another example. Or initiative of China Africa community of shared future. So initiative of community of shared future is yes, for mankind, for the whole world. And next point, I think, uh, so, so we can be ready to make dialogues. So advocates of admiration, dialogue, learning between civilizations, cultures. It is important, yes, to exchange uh, views and to make dialogues and communicating and share experiences for development, yes, to avoid confrontation or a clash. Yes, we need to, to share, to exchange. And be ready, uh, be ready to make dialogues uh, according to Xi Jinping, the Chinese president, so 2014, so he mentioned civilization is colorful because of communication. And it will be enriched by mutual learning. So learning between civilizations can avoid clashes. So this is Ma Kai Suo, senior Singaporean diplomat, said this year in July. So learning between civilizations. And we also had such dialogues and communications, so cultural exchanges between the University of West and the University of Swast, so where I am from. So we have made such talks and we're going to have more such dialogues and communications. And keep your balance. Yes, we can learn to keep a balance, yes, between rightness and benefit. And keep a balance, yes, between human rights and responsibility. Uh, you know, there are different traditions, yes, in China. In China, so responsibility is, is much more concerned because we have the responsibilities, yes, from heaven. We need to shoulder our responsibilities for your job, yes, for, for your family, and for yourself, and for the society as well. But in the West, yes, people are more concerned about the rights, about rights. Uh, that's correct. That's also correct. But we need to keep a balance anyway. So not just to consider rights, not just to, 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 to consider, yes, responsibilities. We need a balance. And not going into extremes. This is also, yes, a philosophy of uh, Chinese tradition, not going into extremes. Uh, to extremes. 
And we need also a harmony, yes, between self and others. A man of virtue, according to the Alanex, while establishing himself and pursuing success, also works to establish others and enable them to succeed as well. So that means, uh, so everybody wants to succeed. And what we should do is we can also help others to succeed, not just yourself. So do not do to others so what uh, you will not have them uh, do to you. Importance of uh, rules. We think of rules and regulations are also important. Yes, we need policies, we need regulations, we need rules, yes, to follow. And uh, so that means that we should be aware of uh, restrictions. That's yes. Thank you, Mr. Wang. You're welcome. Well, thank you, Professor Wang, for your excellent exposition. Now we are going to get into the question and answer round. First of all, we're going okay. to start with the Google Meet questions, and then we are going to go with the Facebook Live one. Yes, all right. I can I can see the chat box. Yes, you can uh, put the questions. Yes, in the chat box. Yeah. So uh, if you have any. Uh, Professor Wan, maybe you can you can you can uh, quit your uh, your presentation by yeah quitting yeah. Okay. There you, there yeah, you that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're just going to provide a couple of uh, minutes while um, the students create their questions, right, and paste them on the chat. Uh, okay. Thank you. So if you've got any questions, you can also ask me here, yeah. Okay, so uh, I've got a, yes, first question. So what could be some suggestions for the students who are here to obtain the harmony of balance, you know, to be part of the Salvadoran society development? Um, suggestions. Uh, so my my point is, so as a student, uh, presently, we, uh, we we should focus our attention on what we are learning. For example, yes, our major and uh, our major and the issues of uh, the discipline 
yes, on the studies or uh, research. So focus our attention first on what we are learning at school, uh, in our books, in our major, in our discipline, in our uh, studies. So that is uh, the, the first thing I think a student should do. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, we may we may also uh, we may also learn yes from uh, from other cultures. For example, from the Chinese culture, uh, from my lecture today, from my talk, you can consider. You can think about so how to balance yourself. How to balance yourself? Uh, yes, with the outside world, with the society, and with the present condition around you. Right? Yes, to learn from other cultures, and to need, yes, to keep a balance, to keep a balance, especially a mental state of balance, a mental balance. Ah. Uh, to so keep a balance, yes, between the, the inside world and outside world, uh, inside and outside. Uh, so that is, uh, so what you can do. And, uh, and thirdly, yes, as a citizen, as a citizen, yes, for the, uh, the, the for, for this country, uh, as a Salvadoran, you, can, you may also put forward, yes, some points, some ideas, some opinions, yes, from your perspective, uh, to share your opinions, your points, yes, with the local government, for, uh, with the uh, university authority, for example, uh, to discuss with your professors, the local the governmental officials, the, uh, the top authority, so leaders of the institutions, yes, to exchange, to exchange, to, to share with them of some of your thoughts, of your opinions. Uh, yes, maybe they can, uh, yes, to uh, promote, you know, understanding and communication, yes, between you as a citizen, as a university student, with uh, the university, with some other institutions, with the governmental offices. Yeah, so that is uh, what you can do. So I think from the uh, perspective of a student. Thank you. And uh, the second question, let's say the second question. So how Buddhism and harmony interact? Uh, so first I'd like to mention, so why did the Chinese people easily accept Buddhism? Because, you know, the Buddhism was, was from India. It is a, a religion. It is a religion. Because Buddhism have almost the same funding, the same foundation with the Chinese traditional philosophy, especially, uh, especially on the aspect of harmony between, uh, between nature and uh, human beings. On this aspect, on this aspect, that's almost the same or yes, close to each other. So that is why Chinese people, yes, uh, very easily accepted uh, Buddhism uh, into, uh, you know, part of uh, our tradition, our philosophy. Yes. And, uh, and as you know, uh, Chinese people, yes, like to learn from other cultures, other, including the religions, including, uh, you know, Christianity, we also, yes, we also learn, we also learn something from Christianity as well. But maybe uh, there are some big differences, you know, yes, between the Christianity and uh, the Chinese tradition. But for Buddhism, it's, 
somewhat different uh, because Buddhism, you know, is is close to to China. Uh, India is close to China. India is also a uh, uh, you know Asian country. So we may share something. We may share something in common. We may have some more, yes, more things in common. Yes, to share with each other. Uh, you know, Buddhism, yes, is different. It's different from Christianity, uh, from Islam. Uh, yes. So that is a second question. And uh, next question about the social and the economic development that China is experiencing towards a greener, a more ecological transformation is intimately linked with the philosophy of harmony. Yes, my answer is yes. Definitely yes, because we have the tradition. Um, according to the tradition of uh, uh, harmony, yes, we need to keep a balance between the economic development and uh, the social development and the environmental development. You know, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese uh, governments are always doing uh, like this, yes, to consider uh, the environmental protection, uh, especially in recent years. Ch uh, so Chinese government has made very strict limitations, restrictions, on the development of the economy. That we have, yes, China has closed many factories that polluted the uh, environment in history. And now when uh, they, they want to open, when they want to open new factories, plants, uh, they, they have to, you know, they have to yeah, goes through very strict studies, very strict uh, investigations on whether or not so such factories will pollute the environment. So environmental uh, consideration is has become yes a, a priority or the top concern for uh, you know decisions on economic development today. And also, yes, on some other aspects, for example, the development of the society. So in order to keep, yes, a balanced, uh, balanced uh, state between the, eco the economic development and uh, uh, social responsibilities. Uh, because we think the development of the economy should serve the people. The purpose of economic development should be for the benefit of the people. And then, and then all the people, all the Chinese people should enjoy, should enjoy, you know, the, the, the harvest, should enjoy the, uh, the results of economic development. Yeah. Uh, yes, for this question, yes, my answer is definitely yes. And uh, next question, a uh, question from Daniel so Zabis uh, from Facebook. So when you practice calligraphy in the proper, in the proper stroke order, you are practicing how many? Yes, yes, I think so. So each time when I am practicing, yes, calligraphy, the first thing I need to do is to calm down, is to calm down, is to have a you know, good state of breath. Uh, that is a mental harmony. I need a mental harmony first. I need to calm down and I need to focus myself on what I'm going to write, uh, especially, you know, when the Chinese people 
uh, practice uh, the calligraphy, we should follow the strict order of the dots and the strict and the strokes. So that means you cannot freely arrange the order of each stroke. We should follow the correct order strictly. Otherwise, it is not calligraphy. It's not Chinese handwriting. So that's an important point. Uh, yes, and uh, you know, the practice of uh, calligraphy can also help me to have a better state of uh, the mental side. Uh, it can help me relax, relax, especially after, you know, heavy work, after heavy work or stress. And, and then, yes, it, uh, it, can, it can help me a lot, of course, yes. So that is why you know in China it is a popular, uh, it's a popular yes hobby yes for, for many people, yeah, not only senior people but also yes young people, uh, including students. Okay, next question. Uh, thank you yes for this question about calligraphy because that is my hobby. <laughs> okay, next question. So should how many? Uh, be a part of a sovereign society and can this help us to grow as a developed society? Yes, in the future, like China did. Uh, so I think, uh, so in my view, so how many, uh, yes, can help, uh, can help all people, of course. It can help, it can, it can help all people to live better, of course. So first, uh, uh, mentally better. Uh, because a uh, harmonious state of uh, of uh, of mind, yes, can can help you healthy first, a uh, mentally healthy and uh, physically healthy, of course. Uh, that's important uh, because you know uh, in the Chinese tradition, people uh, like to follow a way of life, a natural way of life. Because we uh, we think we should follow the way of the we should follow the way of nature. The way of nature is peace, calmness, harmony. So that is yes, what Chinese people is uh, yes yes per pursuing, and uh, you you may also have a try. I think uh, you may also have a try. Yes, to uh, yes, to learn something, yes, maybe you can learn, you can also learn, yes, something, yes, from the concept of harmony, according to my lecture. And, uh, uh, and of course, in my view, a Salvadoran society, yes, can, and of course, yes, will be, uh, will be a better a place of uh, harmony, of course. Of course, uh, El Salvador, yes, will be a more harmonious society. Uh, because according to my knowledge, yes, your, your president, yes, he is doing, he is also doing a lot, yes, to, uh, to help the people here to, to live better. Uh, including, yes, uh, to live better, uh, you know, so not only, yes, mentally, but also uh, physically, yes, uh, through education, through education and some other so social welfare, yes, and uh, some other aspects. And uh, and also, yes, I hope uh, through such, you know, exchanges, uh, such communications, such dialogues, yes, between Salvadoran culture and Chinese culture, and we can learn from each other, of course. Uh, so since I came here, I have learned a lot, yes, from your culture. And... Uh, 
And I suppose you, you may also learn something, yes, from the Chinese culture, uh, including, yes, uh, the, so my talk today, yeah. So I hope it can help you, yes, um, some aspects, yes, in your, in your life or including in some aspects of uh, the Salvadoran society. Yes, I hope to help you, of course. I hope to help you, uh, to do my best, yes, to help you in any aspect. Okay, so that is uh, my answer for this question. And the next question, what is the meaning of Tao? So if you could provide us with a deep explanation, please. Oh, sorry, because of the time limit today, I may not uh, explain, yes, in uh, great detail, yes, about uh, the, you know, difficult uh, philosophy of Tao, because it is a, uh, it is a ruling philosophy, there's a ruling uh, concept or foundation for the Chinese culture and uh, Chinese philosophy. And it is a big topic, of course, it involves a lot. Uh, so I cannot explain, yes, in great detail. And briefly, uh, so I should say Tao reveals and exposes the natural uh, laws about the universe. Uh, because, yes, in the Chinese tradition, we think Tao is from, from heaven. Uh, because we think heaven is above all gods. Heaven is above all gods. So that means Tao is beyond all gods. So that is why Chinese people stick to uh, natural laws because we believe in the truth. We believe in truth. For example, in, uh, in the battle against the, the pandemic, we believe in uh, doctors. We believe in medical scientists. We believe in experts of medical science. So that is why uh, that is, uh, I think, uh, an important uh, factor why China can successfully and uh, quickly control the spread of the pandemic. Uh, that's also, yes, related to our belief in Tao. So briefly, briefly speaking, Tao means natural laws. But the natural laws is not far away from human beings. Natural laws is closely related to people's life. It is related to almost everything that we can encounter uh, in our work, in our life, in our society as a whole. Okay, uh, this is my answer, yes, to this question. And uh, next question, <clears throat> a question from Isaac uh, Digas uh, in Facebook. So what classical books or texts about harmony so do you recommend? Oh, sorry, I, I forgot to recommend. Yes, uh, yes, I forgot. I forgot that to recommend some books or uh, materials you may, you may read. But uh, my advice is you can uh, search, you can search on YouTube. You can search on YouTube about uh, the keyword harmony or Chinese harmony. So you may find some uh, videos for reference. So some videos, yes, uh, yes, are, are good. Yes, for your reference. So I suppose uh, if uh, possible, so I may offer, uh, I may offer yes to you some reference books the next time, but um, but maybe not now. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, for that for today. Okay, next question. <clears throat> so you said uh, the political and the violence uh, chaos. You said uh, Salvadoran territory. How as society? Yes, we can find our harmony and the balance. 
Yeah, there are, according to uh, my knowledge, uh, yeah, there are some uh, yes, violence or chaos or some problems here. So uh, I know that. But uh, yes, the, the, the government, the uh, Salvadoran government is, uh, is doing a lot, is doing a lot to improve the condition, yes, of uh, the society here. Yes, yeah, since I came here, I have, yes, I have uh, noticed, yeah, some changes. Uh, for example, on the, the uh, social security, uh, yes, on um, uh, fighting against, yes, violence and some other crimes, yes, the situation is improving here, the condition is better, is better. So, so with the efforts of the, of the government and all the society here, so uh, I'm sure it will be much better. Uh, it will be better, yes, year by year, day by day. So, uh, host, so should I continue with the questions or just stop here because it is 11, 11.40 now? Well, I think that we are going to conclude here, if you don't mind, the okay. question and answer space. And, uh, well, I would like to ask, I don't know, Mr. Nestor or Mr. Elmer, if they would like to give some ending words for this conference? Oh, sorry, I cannot continue with all the rest questions. There are several, yes, more questions. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Chen Long, and thank you, uh, everybody, for being here. It's, uh, it's good to have a lot of questions. That means that people are actually uh, listening to the to the conference and uh, to the lecture that today Professor Wang has shared with us. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I don't know if I, if I will give uh, the final uh, speech. Uh, I think uh, Professor Elmer will be the most appropriate person. I just want to thank you again for for supporting the institution Confucius Institute activities. Uh, we know that uh, it's a big effort for all of you to be uh, right here with us now because you uh, we know you are between activities and classes and uh, your own lectures and homeworks. But anyway, we thank you very much for all your support. Uh, we, we also want to thank uh, the two hosts today, uh, Andre and Diana. You have been really good uh, on, on your role, so thank you very much. We know that this will be a good experience for also for Professor Wan. And uh, well, I, I, I hope uh, we can see you again in the near future. Thank you very much. Okay, I hope so. Thank you. Okay, thank you so very much. By three methods, we may learn wisdom. First, by reflection, which is noblest. Second, by imitation, which is the easiest. And third, by experience, which is the bitterest. Confucius. We conclude this conference titled Culture of Harmony in China Today. Thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day. So, thank you, the hosts. Thank you, the hosts, uh, so Andalea and Diana. Thank you for your Absolutely. support. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a good day. All right. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Mister. Thank you, Thank David. You. So goodbye. Goodbye.